Hello everyone and welcome back and thank you very much for tuning in today to listen to me waffle on about 10 things that I no longer buy. So these are all things which I no longer buy because I have learnt from experience, from my almost 36 years of existence on this earth. There are also things which potentially I no longer buy because of style and changes in my taste. So let's get stuck in with item number one, which is high heels. Now I used to love high heels. I wore them all the time. I had, I reckon probably about 50 to 60 pairs in my collection that I'd kind of collected throughout my 20s. And it's really when I hit 30 that I noticed I was wearing them less and less because I used to wear them on a daily basis. I used to wear them to work. In fact, heels were actually part of my uniform for a period of time when I worked in um, a shoe shop. And yeah, I used to wear them. I think probably because of that, my feet became more accustomed to heels and actually I found them more comfortable than flats. But over the years, I've gradually stopped wearing them as frequently. And now because I opt for comfort, I feel, or rather I no longer feel that need or that desire, if you will, to buy another pair of high heels. So I have maybe about two or three proper high heels in my collection. In fact, no, it's just two. I have one pair of Jimmy Choo Romy court shoes. They're 85 centimeters, which I would class as a high heel. And then a pair of black strappy Massimo GT sandals, which I think you might've seen in last week's video, the one where I recreated outfits. Those are my only super high heels. I have a couple of smaller heels like that sort of size, but I wouldn't class those as high heels. So yeah, I don't really see any any need or I haven't got any desire to buy any more past what I already own. At number two, it is bright colours. Now, for those of you who have potentially followed me at any period of time since I started blogging way, way back in 2007, you will have seen in my early days or potentially if you're a newer follower and you've seen some of my throwback videos where I've shared some of my older style from back in my 20s, you will have seen I loved me a bit of colour. A bit of colour is an understatement. I loved all the colours <laughs> and more often than not, all in one go. I loved a colour. But I would say towards my late 20s, I started veering away from colour and there was a bit of a gradual change where I started going more for neutrals. And then when I hit 30, again, it's that 30, it's the magic number. When I hit 30, I noticed a rapid change. So between the age of 30 and 31, I would say that is when all of the colour in my wardrobe, or bright colours at least, pretty much vanished in favour of what you guys know me for now, which is my very neutral wardrobe, neutral colour palette, and also incorporating in some of them darker colours and tones, blacks, navies, dark browns, khaki, and all those earthy tones. Now, I wouldn't have said it was like a conscious or deliberate decision to eradicate all of these bright colours. It was definitely an organic kind of change that just came about over the years. I just no longer felt like I gravitated towards bright colours in the same way. The neutrals obviously kind of came into play and they just, they make me happy. And I think that's the most important thing. So long as the colour palettes that you're wearing and the clothes that you're buying or re-wearing make you happy and they make you feel confident, those are the most important elements. And that's why I choose my neutral colour palette now. And also, one thing which I think is really, really valuable, or that I personally find valuable about my wardrobe, is that I have no clashes. Pretty much everything can be teamed with everything else. And so I get more wear out of the majority of items within my wardrobe. Number three is kind of an extension of number two. It's prints and patterns, with the exception of stripes because I love stripes. So I used to love a print. And again, similarly to colors, I would wear all the prints. So we're talking bold floral, polka dots and stripes, art prints, like 
printed prints. That makes no sense, does it? Printed prints. Well, that's because they're prints. You know what I mean. Animal prints. I'm struggling to think of all the prints, but basically you name a print, I've more than likely worn it at some point. However, in the same way as colours, prints for me, aside from stripes, no longer give me that element of joy where I feel like I can mix them in with the rest of my wardrobe. I don't particularly enjoy wearing prints. I like really minimal sort of block colors. And yeah, I just no longer find myself gravitating towards a printed item. More often than not, that tends to scare me and I run away <laughs> from it. So yes, for me, it's now all about the minimal aesthetic. Oh, now I do actually have two floral dresses within my dress collection, which you would have seen in the video that I made a couple of weeks ago now, which was all about summer dresses. And they are more occasion dresses. And that's kind of when I feel like specific florals, if they kind of make me think, yeah, okay, I could wear that then I find that they're kind of appropriate to have in my wardrobe and I won't come down on myself too harshly for having a couple of florals in there. So a couple of florals and stripes and those are my exceptions. Any other prints are out of there. Number four is new occasion wear. And what I mean by this is new as in newly manufactured occasion wear that you've gone out to the shops and bought something that is new. It's fresh, shiny, with the tags on, fresh out the packet, whatever, it's brand new. Now, I don't think I am alone. In fact, I know for certain I am not alone in thinking or liking to have a new dress or a new outfit for any wedding that comes along. I don't believe hands up, that I have ever worn the same dress to more than one wedding. And I think, I know I'm not alone in that, but I think this is perhaps a bad habit that has been learned. Perhaps we've been trained into thinking that, you know, we must always have a new outfit. And I know how problematic that way of thinking is. So my kind of new rule is when I'm going to a wedding, and I was gonna say, or an event or other occasion. I don't go to any other events or occasions. It's literally weddings when I would need this kind of outfit, when I would need occasion wear. I am going to buy that secondhand and I'm gonna go back to that dresses video from a couple of weeks ago. And I showed you guys a H&M Brock collection dress, which I bought secondhand off eBay. The woman who I bought it off had already worn it to a wedding. So now I'm gonna wear it to a wedding. And then after that, I'm probably gonna sell it on and hopefully someone else will buy it to wear to a wedding. And we can see how many weddings that dress can amass in its lifestyle. Right, in at number five is impractical bags. Now, avoiding the purchase of impractical bags is a skill that I've been trying to hone for the last few years now. And I'm, I'm trying to think of a good example of a bag which I kind of purchased. The Chloe Tess bag. This was a bag I think I bought in 2019 or it could have been 2018. I think it was 2019. The year 2020 always throws me off and I don't know if anyone else is the same, but I feel like that year, because it was so awful, <laughs> has literally just completely thrown off all of my sense of time and dates. And I think it was 2019 I bought the Chloe Tess. Now that bag I bought, admittedly, and I've said this before, on a bit of a whim. I'd seen it on Instagram. I'd seen a few people wearing it and I was like, oh yeah, that really tickles my pickle. I liked it. I bought it with a bit of Black Friday discount again. Oh no, damn that Black Friday. And it ended up not being a great bag for me personally. I know there's lots of other people out there who have got Chloe Tesses and they wear and wear them, wear them. For me, it didn't pan out. So I ended up getting rid of that bag. But that's because I didn't do enough research on it. And this is why I make my handbag reviews, which I know not all of you watch. And I know not all of you are a fan of them because, well, for whatever reason, but this is why I make them because reviews other people's opinions on items, especially when they're luxury items, because this is a lot of money we're talking about, folks. Some of these bags are thousands and thousands of pounds. So this is why I like to make those reviews, because I hope 
that in me giving all my pros and cons and my honest opinion of the bags, it might help someone else to make a more informed decision as to whether that bag is right for them and to hopefully avoid them wasting any money and to get them a bag that they will actually use and that is practical. So that is in at number five, I no longer buy impractical bags. In at number six is One Season Wonders. Now I did reference this point in a video I made about three months ago and it was the five shopping habits to kick in 2021. If you haven't already watched it, shameless plug, there'll be an i button somewhere up there that Simon will pop in if you fancy having a little watch because I feel like it's quite a relatable video. There's a few shopping habits in there which I know the majority of us are guilty of so it's a fun little watch. But yes, One Hit Wonders, I've spoken about this before. They are these items which are very, very, very specific. They're always trend-led and they're very specific to just that one season. I'm gonna use the, and I'm not sure how to pronounce this brand, but I think it's Kate, Kite? Kite, it might be, it's K-H-A-I-T-E. Katie Holmes wore a knitted, I'm assuming it was cashmere, bra, and cardigan, literally a couple of weeks later, Zara had brought that out because it went viral. They brought out their alternative. I now see no one wearing those because this was a couple of years ago now. I don't see anyone wearing that bra and knitted cardigan combination. So these are those one season wonders that hit big all of a sudden and then go without being worn. And another point about One Season Wonders and buying them is that they then become really difficult or it's it's not as likely that you'll be able to sell them on secondhand because they are just for that one season. So once you've got your wear out of it, no one really wants it after that. So it's not even a case that you can sell it on secondhand. You can in some, but it's unlikely. So therefore it's just creating more waste. In at number seven is going out or going out, out clothes. Now, I don't know if some of you will know what going out, out is. It's a very British thing. It was a term that was coined, or at least it was a term that was made famous by a comedian that we have over here. He's an East Londoner called Mickey Flanagan. Me and Simon love him because he's from our neck of the woods. And yes, basically it's a term, you're going out, out. You're not just going out on a night out, you are going out, out, which is a hardcore night. So either way, what I mean by this is you're going out with your mates to the club. I feel so old even just saying those words, going to the club, because I haven't been to a club in over a decade. Or you are going to a pub or a bar or something that you get dressed up for. I don't go out or out, out. I actually just went out on a hen do to Brighton last weekend for my sister-in-law. And that was the first time I had been out in that kind of environment for a long time. Now for me, that was probably not the best way to ease me into it because it was the first weekend after Freedom Day. And it was, I've also never been to Brighton before and my goodness, what a life-changing experience that was. And it made me feel so, so old, I cannot even tell you. Now, the outfit that I opted for, we went to see a drag queen in the Brighton Theatre, we went to see Lavoie, which I'm just gonna give a little plug for because I thought she was incredible. I actually did pee my pants a little bit laughing. Um, it was so funny. So if you've got the chance to go see her, do book tickets because it was hilarious, such a good show. And then we went out to a bar and had drinks and stuff. And we stayed out till 2.30 a.m., which for those of you that don't know me, that's a big deal. I go to bed at 10 o'clock and no later than that because I am just asleep by that point. I am not compass mentis at all. So for me, that was a big deal. So this for me was going, this was going out. And I wore the black cosh dress, which I've featured in quite a few videos and you'll have seen it on my Instagram. It's black, it's kind of got like cap 
sleeves, they're elasticated, and then it's got a bit of ruching, but it's a midi dress. It's got a little bit of a slit up the back, but it's a dress that I would wear for day to day with a pair of like chunky sandals or flip flops or something. And for me, I felt really comfortable. I felt appropriate. I did wear it with a pair of by far sandals with a little bit of a heel, but I felt appropriate for the night. But when we walked past the queues of young people, to get into the nightclubs and there were thousands of them it just made me <laughs> it made me feel so old and I realized I do not wear those kind of clothes anymore and I mean no judgment towards all the young people they looked amazing and I hope they all had the best time and really lapped it up now that we are in this stage of non-lockdown but yeah it just made me realize that I don't wear those clothes anymore and there's a reason for that because I don't actually go out or out out. Right moving on to number eight and this is actually something which you wouldn't have seen me feature before I don't think because it is socks and nightwear and rather specifically patterned, fluffy, or animal printed, or slogan printed. Mm. <laughs> so these are all things which I loved at some point in my life, no doubt throughout my 20s and my teens. I definitely would have gone to buy those fluffy Primark socks at some point in my life that I know we've all had a pair of. Uh, and some sort of penguin pajamas or a nightshirt that says I want to sleep with you and then it has a picture of a sheep on it or <laughs> something you know what I mean for me personally and again I'm not throwing any shade if there's some of you sat there in bed watching this video on a Sunday morning and you've got a pair of teddy bear pajamas on there's no judgment there's no shade I love it you rock them for me personally, I just can't do it past the age of 30. I just feel like an overgrown child. And the same kind of thing goes for socks. If I want cozy socks, I'm just gonna buy a pair of like neutral or black or like a dark gray pair of cashmere or wool socks that are nice and toasty, but they will be plain. There's no animals, there's no wording, there's no, no glitter. That's another one that scares me a little bit. <laughs> so yes, for me, it's good old plain and boring nightwear, socks and underwear as well, to be honest. Right, coming in at number nine, bear with me because this might seem a little bit controversial, but it is charity t-shirts and other charity clothing. And what I mean by this is not clothing that you've bought from a charity shop, like secondhand but grand, because we all know I'm big fan, secondhand but grand. This is t-shirts which have been made by a charity for you to support a charity. Now I have bought a lot of charity t-shirts over the years and I have even publicized them on my social channels, on my Instagram account as well. Um, the most recent one I can think about very specifically was uh, in April, I reckon April, May time last year when we were in our first lockdown and there was an NHS t-shirt with a rainbow on it. It was made by a brand called Kindred and of course some of the um, proceedings of that t-shirt went towards the NHS and I think it was towards um, charities for their mental health. I think I might have got that wrong. You see, I've forgotten already. Now, the key part in that is some of the proceeds. So not all of the money, let's say your charity t-shirt costs you 20, 25, 30 quid. Not all of that money is actually going to the charity. And so that bugs me a little bit that I could actually just give that money to the charity. And in terms of it creating like a bit of a buzz because you're wearing the message, you're spreading the message as you're out and about. For me, that's that doesn't actually work because I would buy a charity t-shirt, I would wear it once, potentially promote it. For example, the NHS t-shirt, I wore it once when we were out in the supermarket last year, but that kind of printed logo thing just isn't part of my style. It's not something I would wear on a daily basis. We actually still have a couple of charity t-shirts indoors that I've sewn together to make polishing cloths with so that we can at least use them. But these are items which 
I think for some people you would wear them all the time and in which case that's great. I just think there's other ways to support charities rather than buying newly manufactured items of clothing. Right, we're on to number 10 and it's my final uh, item or category of things that I no longer buy and it is cheap jewellery. And what I mean by that is the super cheap jewellery that you would get, I'm holding one here, an imaginary little card, you know, and they're on the stands. So if anyone, the best example I can think of is if anyone has ever been, is it even still open or is it closed? The Topshop on Oxford Circus, is that it's still here? Is that still a thing or did it go when Topshop went bust? I don't, I don't, I literally haven't been to Oxford Circus in forever, so I have no idea. But yeah, if you went into the top shop on Oxford Circus, it was the biggest high street mecca of all meccas there ever was. And if you went in at ground level, you went to the back of the store and slightly to the right, there was a doorway through to Miss Selfridge, which was next door. And there was the biggest jewellery department you have ever seen in your life. It was like a Santa's grotto or an Aladdin's cave of jewellery and it was all on these little cards around festival season I swear that area doubled inside because then everything had feathers and beads on it but it was all super cheap jewellery and I used to love it there in my 20s. Primark is another place I loved a statement necklace I had so many they were then ones of them big chunky like hexagon things in neon colours <sighs> and they just didn't last. They would either break, they would tarnish super quickly, they would turn your skin green. It was just a massive, massive waste. So now, as you guys know, because I speak about my jewelry quite a lot, I stick to either gold vermeil or gold plated. I lean more to, well, towards gold vermeil because it's a little bit more hard wearing. And I personally don't have any issues with gold vermeil jewelry because my skin isn't very acidic. So therefore I can wear it for years and years and years without it tarnishing. Of course, I do need to look after that a lot more, so I can't wear that in water, swimming, washing hands, in the shower, etc. Needs a little bit more care than that. But I also wear solid gold jewellery, you guys know I'm a big fan of my jewellery, and all of the my jewellery stuff that I normally always have on is all solid gold. So I literally sleep in it, I shower in it, and it never tarnishes. Right, so there we go. Those are 10 things which I no longer buy. If there's anything that you no longer buy from experience or style and taste changes, let me know down in the comments section below. Thank you as always for watching. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday and I will see you next time.